I think the most important thing today is that any country or any hotel, you need to develop uh, training programs and plans which are very specific to the heart of your culture. Because what you cannot do anymore is take a training program from the US and asking uh, Thai or any other uh, Asian nation to, 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 to copy this because it will be fake. And customers uh, realize from your body language that, that what you are doing, that the interaction which you are giving with them is, is fake. I think the important thing is really that you take actually the, the natural mentality and uh, quality to hospitality. And then you use that natural element and you combine it with professional training. And I think that gives you a very good combination. But I think it is very important that you make sure that, that the, the base of the training uh, is really emphasis the culture of, of the hospitality sense in Asia. And I think this is very, very critical to all the trainings I have seen being successful in our hotel. If we use training programs from a foreign country and we, if we adjust and adapt them very well to the Thai mentality, then they are very successful. If we don't do this, they fail. In Laos, together with all the stakeholders in tourism, we have recently developed the new brand Laos Simply Beautiful. The basis is that Laos is in a unique position to combine authenticity with service quality delivered by the people of Laos. Therefore, behind the new brand Laos Simply Beautiful is also an implied expectation of international service quality. The success of any marketing campaign depends on the consistent delivery of this service quality. In fact, in today's world, travel experiences, satisfaction and dissatisfaction is instantaneously communicated via the Internet. It's very difficult to, um, to find good quality staff um, at the moment in the hospitality industry. It's a constant struggle. If um, a 10-year program is put into place, uh, th this gives a chance of acting as a bank, a deposit of staff constantly being trained and will allow the future generation of staff to, to be available to the hospitality industry. Lately in Thailand there been, seems to be a lot of a tourism boom that causes a lot of hotels to be established and that drains the, all the human resources available to feed all these hotels. And that creates a problem for us. Trying to get a simple staff to work in a hotel is very, 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 very difficult, put it that way. Extremely difficult. And uh, it's using us as a fundamental. I think it would be proper to plan ahead for emerging countries to take us as a benchmark and try to uh, plan ahead. Plan ahead is very, very important. But right now we're trying to catch up. A lot of hotels have been established. The resources are not there to feed the hotels. Tourism has to be backed by a government. It's essential that the government is there as the major support arm of tourism. Firstly and foremost, there has to be the regulation. Um, easy example, do the taxis have meters? Is it policed? Do we have an adequate police force when something does go wrong that we take care of the visitors to our country? Um, do we have enough taxis? Are they licensed? Are our hotels regulated so Pricing is regulated, rules and regulations, and in particular things like health and hygiene, safety. Training is the other element. Does the government support the training? It's a big, big responsibility for a government. However, it is immensely important. The foreign currency that it brings into the country, the amount of business it generates, uh, the multiplier effect, people who pay taxes and then spin off and spend more money in the economy but it does require the government's not only blessing but 100 percent backing to make it work and make it work well
You have now heard from a variety of people. Collectively, their comments support the concepts and ideas that have emerged out of the research that has been conducted. There are four important conclusions that can be drawn from what is being said about Lao PDR tourism. One, Lao PDR should realign its measure of success by focusing on revenues earned through tourism rather than the number of annual visitors. In the case of tourism, less can often be more and a focus on high spend international tourists may reap financial rewards. Two, tourism enterprises in the Lao community at large should be encouraged to embrace a philosophy of triple bottom line in which the benefits of tourism are assured of outweighing the threats it poses. Three, heavy investment in human resource development is essential if Lao PDR is going to achieve competitive service excellence in its existing and future tourism workforce. Four, all stakeholder parties must be energized to focus on these important tourism issues by addressing them at the highest levels of national policy. But wait, we've forgotten to ask the tourists what they think. Are they actually willing to pay more for service quality and good service? If Lao PDR invests in building service quality, will the tourists pay for it? We asked several frequent travelers to tell us what their thoughts are on the topic of service quality. When someone takes pride in making your holiday special, you feel like it, it's worth it. You feel like you made the right choice. I travel a lot on business, and if I need to impress a client, that's what it'll take to make or break a deal. Good service, a quality establishment, you'll pay for that, no doubt about it. You know, I find that it's really people that make the experience good or bad, and luxurious rooms and fancy surroundings are, are nice, but when I'm given a choice, I prefer good service, and I'm willing to pay for that. Yes, I would pay more for good service, definitely. 